critical thinking and developing an argument. The purpose of persuasive essays is to win over the reader to the writer's perspective on an issue. Thus, persuasive essays rely on well-developed arguments. Perhaps the best way to become a skilled arguer is to hone your critical thinking skills. Critical thinking involves questioning, asking things like, is this really true? What is the evidence? How credible is the source? And what do I think of this? Do I agree or disagree and why? It is helpful to jot down questions like this and some preliminary responses when you read a text. Fowler and Aaron in The Little Brown Handbook identify the following steps for critical reading and responding to a text. Writing, previewing, reading, summarizing, and forming a critical response through analyzing, interpreting, synthesizing, and evaluating. Let's take a look at each of these skills in a bit more depth before returning to the issue of developing an argument. Writing. Note-taking while reading is invaluable. Questions, summaries, definitions of key terms, and other information can be useful to have all in one place when you begin writing a response to a text. Be sure to indicate the page number of the material that you are referring to, if you were taking notes in a separate notebook or on the computer, rather than in the text itself. Previewing. This involves getting background information on the text and the writer, skimming, and thinking about what you already know about the topic, similar to activating prior learning. Fowler and Aaron suggest checking the facts of publication to gain some insight into the credibility of the source, looking for context clues like the title, introduction, headings, conclusions, etc., reading up on the background of the writer, and thinking about your own questions and even biases regarding the topic. Reading. It is helpful to read a text at least twice. The first time, do so without taking notes, at a leisurely pace, just to get a sense of the work. If you don't know the meaning of a word, just circle it to look it up later, rather than breaking the flow by looking it up in the middle of the first reading. Then reread. Try to identify the main idea, the thesis statement. Learn the key terms. Try to understand the author's logic, connecting idea 1 to idea 2, etc. Determine what information is factual and what information is the writer's opinion and take notes liberally, asking questions, summarizing, etc. Summarizing. Summarizing involves stating the main ideas of a text in your own words. It can be helpful to create an outline or a concept map to understand the organization of the text. If there are several sections, write down the main idea of each section. You can then combine these ideas into a paragraph that summarizes the entire text. Forming a critical response. Analyzing involves separating something into its basic parts to understand it better. For example, in analyzing a text about the role of charter schools in public education, you might start with a question. What reasons does the writer give for failures in public schools? And then look for elements related to this. Analysis always involves looking for information related to a specific question. Thus, it involves filtering out information that is not relevant. Interpreting involves figuring out what the author's assumptions or beliefs are about the topic. For example, in an essay extolling the benefits of charter schools, one of the writer's assumptions might be that an alternative to traditional public schools is needed. This would be a reasonable inference about the writer's assumptions. In contrast, it would be unreasonable to infer that the writer wants to eliminate traditional public schools unless the writer explicitly says this or strongly implies it. When interpreting the writer's meaning and beliefs, be sure to distinguish these from your own. Synthesizing involves making connections among parts of a text or between the text and the context, for example, other works or even the socio-cultural context in which it was written, by using your own ideas and knowledge to create a new perspective. We'll be discussing synthesis in more detail later in the course. Evaluating involves identifying the quality and significance of a text. And Fowler and Aaron offer several guidelines. What are your reactions to the work? How sound are the work's central idea and evidence? How well does the author achieve his or her purpose? How authoritative, trustworthy, and sincere is the author? How unified and coherent is the work? 
What do color, graphics, or online sound and video contribute to the work? What is the overall quality and significance of the work? Do you agree or disagree with the work? In summary, critical thinking involves actively engaging with a text, asking questions, drawing conclusions, and determining the quality and significance of a text. These skills are essential for developing your own arguments, as you will need to engage in critical reading of source documents that you use to support your own positions. As discussed previously, the main types of evidence that you will use to develop an argument are examples, expert testimony, and statistics. You typically need a couple of pieces of evidence to support an idea. Too much will seem like overkill, while too little evidence will leave the reader unconvinced. Be careful not to succumb to illogical arguments or fallacies to support your position. Stubbs and Barnett identify numerous fallacies, among them the following that can be tempting in research. Suppression of evidence. Being selective in the presentation of evidence, such as only citing studies that support one's position and neglecting the studies that contradict it. Generalization from insufficient evidence. Based on a limited amount of evidence, for example, a single study with a small sample size, drawing broad conclusions. Post hoc ergo proctor hoc. Latin, after this, therefore because of this. Assuming because y comes after x, x must have caused y. Related to this is the assumption that correlation, two things occur together, implies causation, one thing caused the other. False assumptions. Drawing a conclusion based on faulty premises, such as this student's parents haven't complained to me, so they must be happy with their child's progress. This implies that parents who are not happy with their children's progress will invariably complain to the teacher, which may or may not be true. If you rely on well-documented evidence, particularly peer-reviewed research, to support an argument, you will be off to a good start. Selective use of examples and expert testimony can add color and richness to an argument, so choose these carefully and make sure that the facts and statistics that you include are up-to-date and accurate. Official first-hand sources are better than second-hand sources.